there ladies and gentlemen back again for another episode of my goy this time we have come to the holy hill at old goa and behind me you can see the amazing tower the bell tower of saint augustine's convent that used to be here which was built somewhere around 1597 and completed in 1604 Now before I continue with the episode I want to tell you that we are still in the covid period and I am wearing a mask but this is distorting the commentary I am giving so I am going to remove the mask but please wherever you go in a public place do not go without wearing the mask and taking the precautions in fact we have come to the holy hill over here and the episode is not about st augustine's tower it is about something that is there exactly across the road and that is the museum of christian art now the museum of christian art was originally established in 1995 at the rashol seminary but more on that when i go there but at this stage i am going to tell you something about the big building that you see behind that is the santa monica nunnery established in 1606 this was the first nunnery of the east and the first one in asia the biggest nunnery nunnery is where the nuns are taught and they practice their uh, uh, they are uh, preaching their religion whatever inside this is a place where men are not allowed to enter because this is cloistered it has a beautiful facade and for those of you who may not know santa monica is the mother of saint augustine and here also you find the convent of saint augustine over here very close by to santa monica nunnery which was the oldest like i told you behind me you can see the church of st augustine's and here there were two churches one was nossa senhora da graça or our lady of grace which was in the augustine tower which collapsed and the bell that was in that tower we can see it in the panjim church today but the church that is here or the chapel that is here inside is amazing that's what we will see but today what we have come is for something that if you are in old goa or for that matter you are in goa you must come and visit and that is the museum of christian art today after a long time it is being reopened by doing renovations and here you can see some of the amazing pieces of the christian religion so i am not going to waste more time here because i want you to see what is there and ladies and gentlemen i am sure you are going to be amazed so let's not waste time let's go down to the museum of christian art come on follow me so having traveled all along the ribandar causeway and the beautiful river side of mandavi we came to the holy hill where you saw the ruins of saint augustine tower and from there we just walked down under this beautiful arches and we have headed to the museum of christian art one of the most amazing experiences you'll ever get and if you leave this place called old goa and go without seeing the museum of christian art you have missed a part of goa so what we will do is we will walk into the museum of christian art follow me inside good morning natasha welcome well. sanjeev thank you so much natasha ladies and gentlemen i want you to notice something i told you about covid please take all precautions and i am so touched that when i have extended my hand out she did it the indian way 
This is Natasha Fernandez, the curator of the Museum of Christian Art. Amazing place and I am sure that she is going to give you a wonderful tour and she is not going to show you everything. Why? Because you should come here and you say, am I right? You are absolutely right, Sanjeev. Welcome everyone to MOCA, as we call it, Museum of Christian Art. And like Sanjeev said, no, I'm not going to show you everything because you need to come here. Well, I would put that as an invitation for all of you. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you another thing also. Just behind my cameraman Swapnil, there is a wonderful place here you can come and relax. And it's called Alfresco Cafe. I'm just going to show it to you. So if you come here, you don't have to remain hungry. You can pick up something here to suit your taste. When you come to this Museum of Christian Art at Old Goa, you come to see these uh, plaques over here. And the plaques are telling us that the original museum that was there at Rashol was inaugurated by the then President of India, Dr. Shankar Dayal Sharma, in the presence of Sri Bhanu Prakash Singh, who was the governor of uh, Goa, and Dr. Wilfred de Souza, who was the chief minister. And then it was shifted on 23rd of January 2002 to Old Goa. And at that time, it was inaugurated by Sri Muhammad Fazal, the honorable governor of Goa. So, in, uh, sorry, in the presence of most reverend Dr. Raul Gonsalves, who was the archbishop at that time. So now what we will do, we will just go in and see what are the different things. Let us see from where Natasha takes us and shows us the important aspects of the museum. Christian art was set up in the seminary of Rashol in the year 1994. It was inaugurated on the 23rd of January by the then President of India, Dr. Shankar Dayal Sharma. The museum moved to Old Goa in this convent of Santa Monica in 2002. Again on the same day, 23rd of January uh, 2002. Now, today, uh, it was recently uh, refurbished. We were closed for three years uh, with a major, re we've undergone a major refurbishment of the museum and uh, it was reopened for the visitors on the 23rd of January 2021. So the, the museum is open for all visitors from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily, that is from Sunday to, Mon to Sunday. So every day of the week we are open. And uh, besides uh, enjoying the museum experience, we also have a, a, a shop which has souvenirs for sale. So, and uh, the souvenirs have been well thought of because we use the motifs from the collection to, and we have made uh, beautiful souvenirs as nice memories for visitors to take back. We also have uh, an alfresco cafe where visitors can relax post their visit and enjoy some snacks and coolers because it's always hot and humid in Goa. So lovely cooler choices as well. So all in all, it becomes a beautiful experience when you come to Old Goa, you uh, visit the museum and you also have a lovely time to spend here. Yeah, initially, when this uh, project was conceived way back in 2016-17, the earlier managing committee worked upon an estimate which got sanctioned by the Ministry of Culture in Delhi. And that estimate was 5.4 crores of rupees for the entire refurbishment, the modernization of this program. And with every project of this size, as one gets deeper into the thing, one realizes that there's a lot more expenses that need to be incurred beyond what one has just been able to see superficially. And the final project cost moved to about 7.4 crores rupees. Out of this 7.4 crores, over 1.5 crores went towards the civil work and the renovation. Of importance to the people who are going to visit the museum is going to be the unique experience they'll see of the vitrines. That's the display cases in which 
all these artifacts have been stored. These vitrines have come all the way from Slovenia. We had a team that came in over here to install these. A huge amount of, uh, I wouldn't say an uh, expense, a huge investment went into these vitrines, something in the region of about 2.05 crores, which includes the custom duties that one had to pay for this. The unique thing of these vitrines is that it's climate controlled and it's temperature controlled as well as the lighting within the uh, vitrines, ensures that none of the artifacts will ever get damaged in time to come. Now that the first phase of this museum has been complete, we are looking at actually building of a conservation center in association with the archdiocese and perhaps the museum of, uh, uh, I mean, the Ministry of Culture in New Delhi, who have also indicated that they could be open to such proposals. And that's where the museum is headed towards the building of a conservation center. A conservation center not purely designed for uh, uh, Christian art or something, but secular, across religions, across genres. The museum has recently reopened after a very uh, intensive refurbishment work that was done by the museum in collaboration with the Gulbenkian Foundation. And uh, this project was funded largely by the Ministry of Culture New Delhi but also by a number of other institutions like the Ministry of Culture Portugal, the Kalus Gulbenkian Foundation Lisbon, and uh, many corporates and individuals from Goa and around the world. So the benefactors are already mentioned on the Board of Honor. But by and large, I want you to see the museum in its new, uh, new look and the various interventions that we've carried out and also to spread the, the word and have people from Goa come and have uh, visit the museum. So this, this is the museum that you see, which was part of the convent of Santa Monica. In 2003, there was a uh, renovation which allowed them to move into the museum. Uh, in this renovation was done a large part of this work that you see, the, the mezzanine, you know, and also completely new repair and refurbishment which was done. During this period of time, uh, the kind of works that were done were uh, very essential to the museum which was shifted from uh, Rashal to Old Goa. Also it made the museum available to a lot more people who wanted to visit it because it was closer to all the tourist centers and uh, with this the museum started on a, on a new footing when it moved over here. We have also uh, changed the basic way of displaying and storage of the museum by bringing in uh, showcases that are climate controlled and we have improved areas around the museum which is the the sitting space that we were in the approach to the museum so all this has been part of a larger project that has been done a significant uh, thing that we managed to do in this project is right behind Armenia there is the the chairlift ladies and gentlemen many of you hesitate to go to different places because they are tiered. They've got one first floor, second floor. And many of the people who have a walking problem or knee problem or they are aged, uh, they hesitate and they sit outside, missing out some of the best things. And ladies and gentlemen, the Museum of Christian Art, I must salute them. Wait, let me change it here. I must salute them because they have taken that aspect for the disability people to access their floor on top where we are going now. But I want you to see this, and I want you to see the demonstration. So let's go ahead. So I have just come into this place which is nice and cool as compared to what is there in old Goa outside. Goa is quite hot at this time. And another very, very hot item that I have come to is this museum which is very cool. So let's see now what Natasha has to tell us about uh, this museum. I'm going to keep my hat for a little while here. So Natasha, 
we are seeing a beautiful structure over there. What is that? So this is one of the main highlights of our museum, the Tabernacle Monstrance. This kind of an object is one of its kind in the whole world. It's, it's a monstrance. That is where you would keep the consecrated host in okay. the church. And you have the globe, which is the tabernacle. And you see it in this form of a pelican who's piercing her chest and is feeding her babies her own flesh. So this is the this depiction of the pelican as a sacrificial bird and was used a lot in Christian art in the medieval times. And uh, so you see this depiction here, it's, a, it's silver on wood, the material is silver on wood and it was originally made for the convent of Santa Monica. Uh, later when this convent was abandoned uh, and there was nobody here, this object was moved to the cathedral. And once the museum was set up, it was brought here for display. How old is it? 17th century. The artists who made this? Yes. Who are they? To answer straightforward, we can say unknown. But we will say they are all local artists who worked on these Christian art objects. So we have the major churches coming up in the 16th century. Yeah, uh, maybe the missionaries who came initially must have brought some prototypes of sculptures, paintings with them, must have had sketches with them of uh, liturgical vessels that needed to be made for the, uh, pro produced for these various spaces. And they came to know that there was this very uh, skill set of local craftsmen available in this region. Yeah, I'm not saying Goa specific, in the region who were available, who were very skilled and they resorted to asking the local craftsmen and artists to work on these objects. So this is the hand of our local artists. One of its kind in the whole world and you will be able to see it. So Museum of Christian Art is a place to come when you come to Old Goa. But tell me one thing, Natasha. You call this as a monstrance, but when I have gone to different places, I found that the monstrance was a sun-like structure. Just like this one? Yes, exactly like this. So it's usually this kind of a depiction, but in the case of the monstrance and tabernacle that we have seen, uh, the first one which I said is very, very unique. It is depicted as as a bird, the pelican, because the pelican in medieval times was used a lot in Christian uh, iconography and in artistic representations because the pelican was considered a sacrificial bird. Okay. So they compared this pelican to Christ. When we talk about the Museum of Christian Art, uh, we like to highlight that all these uh, objects, art objects that you get to see were made by our local artists. So it is the hands of various artists from across India who must have worked on these objects. So whether it is embroidery on the textiles which is done with zardozi elements or if it is, uh, you know, chalices that we have on display in the museum which have Indian elements such as the bells or if you look at the features of the saints whether it's the images of the Virgin Mary standing on a lotus, but also on the crescent moon. These are the Indian elements that we try to highlight in the, uh, in the collection. And this is what we would like you to come and see. Natasha Bai, there's a lovely looking baby here who's wearing a very highly brocaded dress on a silver base. Can you tell us a few things about this? Because this looks purely Indian. Yes, you're absolutely right. It is purely Indian. This is baby Jesus, saviour of the world. He's standing atop the, the globe, the world, and you have a snake coil around it. Basically, it represents the victory of good over evil. And since you have uh, commented on the, the dress and the embroidery elements, so the ele embroidery elements uh, can be compared to the Zardozi works that were done, uh, you know, in the region, uh, the Deccan and even uh, around the northern parts of India. So how these Zardozi elements came to be uh, introduced in religious uh, uh, textiles in the church, we presume that there were many people who were involved in the production of art objects. Uh, for the churches, which included uh, embroiderers who must have been uh, from another faith who were working on the objects. Even the sculptures could have been worked on by goldsmiths, silversmiths who were uh, Hindus or Muslims. So we have, what we have to highlight is the Indianness 
the Indian elements because the art that we are showcasing is Indo-Portuguese and it, it had elements of both. It had European as well as Indian elements. And as you rightly pointed out, the Zardozi elements just stand out in this particular dress. Also, it's 17, it's 18th century, so that uh, the fabric is very worn out and fragile, but it has been uh, very carefully conserved by the conservators from intact New Delhi. Okay. okay. Yes. So here there are items of brass and uh, silver or anything else? Silver, gold, gilt silver, some in brass. You have something and displayed I'm in gold here? In gold, yes, we have. We have objects in gold as well. This gallery is of precious metals. This is a gallery uh, which is of it's a section for the, based on materials and uh, this one is of the precious metals which include gold and silver gold. and there is some in uh, brass as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, you are going to see gold, silver and brass. Don't waste your time. Come here. So as you look, you will know which ones are silver. Those that look uh, like gold are mostly gilt, gilt silver. Gilt silver. Okay. Uh, could you tell us something about these cruets, these bottles? Okay. So the cruets are containers which are meant for the wine and water, which are used during the the religious service rel during the mass, and they are poured into the chalice that we saw right in the beginning of this section. And uh, usually the containers are transparent, so we, the, the priest who's using it knows what, what it holds inside. So I was talking about the transparent cruets. You can't see, see. What, what would have been in, so that's why the alphabets on the top would help the priest to know which one had water, because aqua in Latin would be, uh, or in Portuguese would be for water, and we vino, uh, meaning wine. So the priest would immediately know which one had wine and which one had water. I see a boat here. <laughs> it fascinates everyone who comes here. The incense boat is uh, where the incense is kept, like it's a container for the incense and it would sometimes have a spoon and it then spooned into the thurible. They say that the incense, it, ha it is in the shape of a boat because Sailors at the end of a successful voyage would offer something in thanksgiving to the to their religious spaces, in this case the church, and uh, usually it was connected with their profession, and that's why So this could be gifted? It could be a gift that is given by uh, a sailor or somebody some from the sailing community? To the, to the church. To the church. Okay. Do we have royalty here? We have royalty, yes, we do. But in this case, these crowns were not meant for the kings and the queens, but the king and queen of heaven, as we say, the, the virgin and the child. So these were image crowns for the images of the Virgin Mary and baby Jesus. That's why you see the difference in the sizes. And it must have really been a large sculpture on whose head the, this and crown must And this is made have. in silver? This is entirely in silver, yes. This again is a silver crucifix, but if you look at the image, the image is uh, carved in ivory. So uh, it was very common to have in our houses uh, in olden days, we would have this size crucifixes. Uh, we can make out that this was not necessarily from a church, but from a private home. You know, somewhere down the eras of Goa, we had something called as an inquisition and they said that there were tortures and all. Now here I see a big tong over there. Was this used there? What, what is the use of this? I don't think this was meant to be used as a torture element. In fact, it is a host press. So the host is the, con uh, the circular bread flat wafer which represents symbolically the body of Christ and that is made you was made using this mold yeah and it would be pressed and it has uh, an image image inside and it would be uh, it would be pressed imprinted on imprinted on the on the, on the host. host yeah so that's exactly what it is here i see a lot of idols and all of babies a little more enlightenment on this these uh, are images of infant jesus so we have two uh, representations in beds so 
we have the infant Jesus uh, which we display in our nativity cribs. These are made in ivory and they say that in the Goan families uh, a bride would be given a gift of the infant Jesus uh, in the, by her mother in the hope that she would have a male child. This would be in the past and they would embellish this with a lot of jewellery. I presume because the the jeweller who was or the goldsmith who was working or was given this to embellish was was thinking about Lord Krishna and would make a bed as well, you know. And here we have many visitors who comment when they come here the to say how closely it resembles Bal Krishna.